Welcome back to our divine service. And um, it's a good thing to be here today. Uh, we are still on the land of the living, and so we give God thanks for all his benefits. Uh, we are not worried about our health because God takes care of us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And so we want to ask that you join us in worship today as we give God the glory in whatever capacity you find yourself. God is still worthy. And so we join with each other, whether online or in the, uh, the halls of this house. We give God glory just the same. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's worthy to be praised. Not just now, not just when we have COVID-19 taking over the world. He's always worthy to be praised. And so we give it to him because he deserves uh, all praise, honor, and majesty, and glory. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Bow, bow, we're in your presence. Let it rain. Oh, rain. Let it fall on me. We're
Praise God. Praise the Lord. It's only the presence of the Lord that can soothe our sorrows and cause us to be at peace. Amen. Because around us is just turmoil. There are persons who are warring against each other even this time. But we take, can take comfort that the presence of God can make that difference. Amen. If we allow His peace to overflow our hearts, knowing that with Him all things are safe and secure. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. And I trust that as you join us online today, with, with, with um, you know, worshiping, you feel the presence of God in your lives also, knowing that God is no distance when he wants to show us with his blessings. Praise the name of the Lord. You are here. Oh, I 
That's who he is. And even this time that we face turmoil, he is our way maker. He is our promise keeper. He is our light when we can't see just darkness around. That is who he is. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just celebrate. For we serve a God. He's a way maker. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And we're going to do our final song, You Made a Way. When I, my back was against the wall. And it looked as if everything was over. I think by now, I don't know if any more has been added these 53 cases that we have seen or been notified of well, the last time I, I listened to the news. But we still believe that the Lord will make a way for us. Amen? Amen. We can trust Him and believe. We can believe in Him that He's going to make that way for us. Because there's no other way. There's no one else we can turn to. No one else we can trust. So we have to believe in him for his way to be made on our behalf. Praise God. You made a way When our back was against the wall And it looked as if it was over
Let's continue to magnify the Lord. Let's continue to lift up his holy name. What a song. And you made a way. It's a wonderful song indeed. A song that is fitting for this time such as this. Amen? Amen. You make a way. And as we are facing this COVID and there are many different things that, that are permeating the atmosphere and, and, and things that, that, that seem to bow us down, we are reminded through the wonderful ministry of the, the, the praise team that the Lord, God Almighty, will make a way. Amen. So as we come at this time, we're moving into our divine service, a, a service that will where we'll hear from the Lord, where we'll hear from the Lord's anointed and his mouthpiece, Pastor Bell, who is here in the studio audience with us. We give thanks at this time. I want to say a special good afternoon to those who are viewing online and to those who have been supporting and, and, and keeping us during this, this time, even in the studio here. I want to say a special thanks. Uh, I know there are many things that persons online could be doing at this time, so we give thanks that, that persons have taken time out of their busy schedules to, to join us online, to continue the fellowshipping of the brethren so that the Lord's work can be done. Amen? Amen. As we are moving, we want to also acknowledge uh, or, or Deacon Hamilton that has provided this means and stream to the Lord's touch. He has, he has set up everything and we give thanks to him and also his wife as they had a wonderful Sabbath school. They conducted it as superintendent and teacher and we give thanks to them. Amen. Amen. We also are thankful for the lesson that has come at this time that ties in with our theme. Our theme for this month will be I believe God. And this is a wonderful theme as the word was just coming from the song, we, we, it ties into everything that I believe God. We need to believe God at this time because truly we are bombarded by many things, even the social distancing, distancing that has somehow um, allowed us not to all be congregated here. And it is also putting a, a, a slowdown to the Lord's work. But we give thanks because we know that despite all these things, He has made a way, He has provided a medium by which we can now view the Lord's word and, and, and the Lord's people. So we give thanks to this, this situation and the fact that we have found a way to, to reach out to God's people. So we give thanks. Um, I wanted to start us off with this song that, that had come to me while I, was, uh, while I was getting prepared. And it is standing on the promises. Truly we have to stand on the promises of God. <coughs> Sorry. We have to stand on the promises of God right now, and we have to, to, to believe in, in His Word. He said that He will not leave us, nor will He forsake us, and we have to believe that, Virgin. I, 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 my mind went back to, to the, the children of Israel, even as they were running from the, the Egyptians, and they came up to the Red Sea, and you can, can you just imagine that as, as you, were, you were moving away, and you are being led by someone, the person was reassuring you that you saw the sea. And, and you would have had in your mind that there was no way out. But the Lord did indeed make a way at that time. Amen. And it's the same God. The same God to yesterday, today, and forever. It's the same God that was there, and it's the same God that is here now. Praise the Lord. So we are looking to those promises that He will take us out of this situation, that He will deliver us. And we're standing on those promises. Amen? Amen. So we'll start our, our service off by singing the song, Standing on the Promises of God. And I'll ask the praise team to just assist me as we sing this song. And remember that, that and are, we are reminded as they come that the promises of God are true. And the words that you have heaven and earth will pass away before his words return to him void. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing. Standing on the promises 
We're standing on the promises of God. Amen. So we give thanks that we, 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 we are able to, to not stand on something that's not sure, not stand on something that, 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 that is counterfeit, or something that we would seek to break, or not hold our weight, but we're standing on the promises of God. Amen? So we give thanks for that. At this time, we, we will seek the Lord. We, we will want to pray to the Lord or reach out to, to get His, His well wishes, his guidance, his, his support that will be needed before we move further into the service. Um, especially in a time like this, we need to hear from God. We need to hear what it is he wants for us. Um, so we at this time we want to communicate to the Lord and we want to seek him in prayer. So let us ask for those who are here online to have a moment and for those who will see for us to just stand as we get ready to pray to God and to seek his face. Let us ask our dear Deacon Amata to just read a word of prayer as we move into this space. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens of the earth, the creator of things both visible and invisible. We come to you, O Lord, thanking you for the fact in which you have created man to have dominion on this earth. You did indeed make provisions for him. And when man went not according to your commands, you still, O Lord, made a way that there, O Lord, can be provisions that we can come to you and, O Lord, cry to our Father. We are thankful, O Lord, that the man has sinned short of your glory, you have made a way, O Lord. Even when there seemed to be no way, when no one was found worthy, when no other created thing, O Lord, could have shed and provided, O Lord, uh, this way that we could be reconciled to you, you, O Lord, allowed your divinity to come down in humanity, O Lord, that we can be reconciled unto you. O Lord, we are thankful that you have made even a way, O Lord, at this time, O Lord, at this time of the day in which we can come to you, recognizing, O Lord, that you have provided a word, O Lord, a word to soothe our hearts, a word to soothe our minds, a word for us to reflect and realize that you are still with us. O Lord, you have not only made a way, but you have provided a vessel. For so many times, O Lord, we see, O oh God, that which you are doing, and we want to be a part of it, but to be a part of it, we need a vessel. We need a conduit, we need a path to get to you. So, Lord, you have always provided a way in which we can reach you. And we thank, O oh Lord, you that you have provided your manservant to come to us, O oh Lord, with a word that comes only from you. A word that only is you, because you said in your word that you are the word, you are the light, O oh Lord, you are the living word, O oh Lord. Not a word that was from there and then and is placed in a library on a shelf somewhere, but a living, active, breathing word that can touch the heart and renew our minds towards you. O oh Lord, we ask that you will bless the vessel, bless each and every thing that shall be said and done today in your house that it will be done according to your leading, that in the end you receive the honor, glory, and praise. We ask all these things and we tell you thanks and we feel some grudges, O Lord. We tell you thanks and we say Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We do thank the Lord for prayer. The Lord, our prayer of the righteous man have made it much. So we give thanks to Deacon Hamilton for his wonderful prayer and uh, for seeking the Lord's face. Amen. At this time, we, we've been moving shortly into our scripture reading. But as I was standing there and listening to the prayer, I said that God is indeed awesome. He's a God that is truly 
one that allows things to happen so that his name will be glorified and so that his name will be lifted up. And as I was sitting there, I was saying to myself that God has indeed called for us to be still and to know that he's God. Because even with this COVID-19, he has allowed us to be so we are not able to see it. So we can't effectively fight it and we are not able to 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 find any means of vaccine or anything that can quickly get it away from us. So in essence, we have to depend on him. Yes. We have to trust in him. We have to look to him. And that is what we are facing now. We, we, we would have really gotten rid of it probably if it was up to our minds and our, our intentions. We, we would have gotten rid of it the same day it came about. But God saw it fit that we would be chastised, we'd be bombarded and put into this situation where we have to seek him. And I remember my mind goes back to Paul as he sought to, to, to get um, relief from the thorn that was in his flesh. And the Lord said his grace, his grace is sufficient for him. And, and so it is that we now are facing that we are allowed grace to seek the Lord, to seek his face and to believe and trust in him as we, we, we seek deliverance from this plague that is upon us. Amen? Amen? We're now going to look to our scriptures and our scripture reading is taken from oh, let us get it here it's taken from Luke 1 verses 39 to 56 so for those who are viewing online just follow along so Luke 1 verses 39 to 56 <laughs> you know, brethren, that um, habit is, is a thing because as I as I was there, I was about to say the alternative, but I realized that it is <laughs> because of this situation we, we will have to change our, our mode. So I read Luke 1 verses 39 to 56. And for those in the studio, they will support me, of course. So we're looking at Luke 1, verses 39 to 56. And it reads thus, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zechariah, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come for me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which the Lord were, which were told her from the Lord. Amen. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall be called blessed. Amen. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength in his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and in which he hath sent them empty away. He hath opened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her own house. Here I get the reading of God's holy word. We say, thanks be to God. And so it was that this story is being told. But what, what came out to me was that, as I was reading the story, was that she believed. She believed in, in, in what the Lord had said and promised. And so it is in that believing what the Lord has promised that we will also receive a blessing. Amen. So it is the, the thing today is to remember that we have to believe, we have to trust in the Lord. You know, uh, the song will put it very pointedly that he will make a way even when there seems to be 
no way. And so we are reminded of this as we go throughout the day. I now seek to call Pastor Bell as, as he is the one that will be the word I've been talking for a time too much. So, before he comes, we will have a song that will usher in the man of God as he brings the word of the Lord. So, we are now implored or, or being asked to get our minds in the place to hear from the word, the, the servant of God, to take off our shoes because of the place that we're standing on now is holy ground as we usher in and get ready and change our positions to hear what the Lord has to say in such a time as this. So we are moving to get that song um, started. But I'm also, I'm also um, reminded of God's mercy uh, that he has bestowed upon us uh, in the fact that we have not heard of any members of our church being sick. And that is something to which we have to praise the Lord as well. Amen? We have to really look to these things because it is not easy when you see a country such as Italy that they're throwing the money on the road. The money is of no use to them because people are dying. And despite the fact that they are rich and they have a lot of money, the money cannot help them because it cannot reverse the sickness. It cannot um, allow the sickness to be somehow move up around them. And we look to this and we are reminded of the children of Israel as they put their blood on the, on the doorposts and that the angel of death was passing and the angel of death fell upon those who didn't have the blood on their doorposts. Amen. So we are reminded that we have to have the Lord, that blood, as our banner. We have to have the blood stain banner to allow that angel of death to pass over us and to have grace of the Lord fall upon us. Um, and it's, a, it's indeed a very uh, sad situation, as I mentioned before. But we are thankful to the Lord that He is our banner. He is our balm in Gilead. He is the one who will take us through this time and protect us. Um, Sister Marshall will say, uh, we are we're not fearful, but we, we believe and trust in God that he will do exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever ask for in this time. Amen? Amen. Without further ado, we now have our song. And following the song, we will have
a wonderful song indeed. Saying who we are. We are the salt of the earth. And we are highly flavored. And I believe that God provides for us an avenue whereby we can send his word out. We can speak to those who need him, those who need strength, they can be comforted. And those who are estranged from him can be brought back to him. We believe in such a time as this, as salt of the earth, we need to be aware of the deep interest, amen, that we must have in others. Amen. They need God today. They need the Spirit of God in their lives today. Let's send the light out there. Amen. Hallelujah. God. That God will meet their needs and supply it. Amen. It's a wonderful day, afternoon, to be in the sanctuary where we come to magnify to live for the name of Jesus Christ. And we are coming from, amen, by the students of Church of God's second day in Brighton. Amen. And we are happy to know that we are coming to you, amen, via the internet. And to those who are out there, we want to reassure you that there is hope amen. in King Jesus and that there is hope in the Lord. Yes. We believe, amen, that we should abide by the rules of our country, our government. And that being so, the church even finds another, find another way in which we can bring the word of God to you. Amen. And we are coming to you this afternoon by way of the internet. And for those who are watching right now, we believe there is a measure of hope. We believe that there is a word that the good wants to bring to your mind, to your thoughts. We believe that there is something there that will interest you right now. Oh, praise be to God. If you are hard pressed, if you are confused, if you are bewildered, if you are part, amen, of the community, amen, where you are under duress at this time, I want to let you know that God will make a way. He made a way Amen. where there seem to be no way. Thank you all. And thanks to those who are in the sanctuary at this time. We believe God in everything. And that's what we want to bring forth to you for the rest of this month. And uh, I have a sub-theme that I prepared for all of us. And this will come together in a good way with our theme. It is, are we in the end times? Are we in the end times? And the word of God comes to us from Matthew 24. I read just a few verses there. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all of these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom shall against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. And all these are the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you and be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no there shall no flesh be saved for the elect's sake. Those days shall be shortened. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. I 
How we in the end times? This question has been asked throughout biblical history of the church. And it has been repeatedly asked everywhere we go by persons who are of religious minds and individuals who just want to know what is happening. They ask the question, are we in the end times? This question is no doubt because coming out of this, people would, would assume that, that what we are seeing around them are the presenting situations, are the presenting problems that would allow them to react and ask these questions. But let me rephrase the question. Do I feel that our present day church age should be the last of the church age? That's how I rephrase it. Do I feel that our present day church age to be the last of the church age before the coming of the Lord? After much readings and studying the scriptures, there are evidences to suggest that we are in the last days. Amen. Do I want to predict? No. I will not predict at a time or present term. But the scripture tells us that only God knows for sure when this glorious event is to take place. And so if everyone knew the time, then most people wouldn't bother with Jesus until the time drew near. And so God, he keeps this close to him. He knows exactly when things will happen. He knows exactly how a man to work is a thing. God wants to us to choose his lifestyle yes. for our home. And for us to live accordingly to his will. And that's why he will not allow us to know where his return will be. Yes. He wants us to trust him. Amen. No matter if he comes today yeah. or 30 years from now, he still wants us to trust him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, friends, today, Life is not truly lived until we live it for Jesus. Amen. And that's what the end of time is all about. We should live a life that is truly not our own, but a life that is lived, amen, on Jesus Christ. Yes. The song writer reminds us on the Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other grounds are sinking sand. All other grounds are sinking sand. Why then do we care if these are the last days? We should feel, amen, something very urgent coming out from our spirit about the last days. Hallelujah. God Almighty thinks about it. If God, amen, didn't think his prophecy was important, then why a great portion of his word contains Prophecy. Yeah. And so I believe that the prophecy is for us to unearth, to understand the mind of God. Yeah. For us to understand, hallelujah.
future, what will happen in the future. And so prophecy not only clues us in on the future events, but also shows God, amen, God keeping his word and promises for those who believe him. That's what prophecies are all about. God Almighty keep his word. God Almighty provided an answer to the problems of the future. God Almighty allow his people to continue to believe. Hallelujah. In him. There's not been a promise made by God that has not come to pass. And God's promises are always sure. God's word will never go void. Hallelujah. His words are true. Amen. And his promises are kept. Can we praise the Lord today? Yes, Lord. His words are true. Amen. And his promises are kept. Therefore, if prophecy is important to God, then it should be important to us today. Oh, praise be to God. Let us be mindful that God has sent and sent his word out there through his mouthpiece, through his prophets, his major prophets, his minor prophets, the apostles, and all of those vessels he had used, hallelujah, Amen. to proclaim his words. You know, the apocalyptic books such as Daniel and Revelation, they are symbolical and they are figurative in style. But you know what? There is a common theme in prophecy in, about Christ returning surrounding amen these books who oh, praise God the common theme in prophecy is Christ return and the events surrounding his return the question is we are presently in the time as it is written in the book of Daniel and Revelation hallelujah so in order to answer that question, let us look more to the word of God. Amen. John 14 and verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I'd have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. For where I am, there you may be also. So Jesus Christ, in your prophecy, he had a promise. He had promised his followers that he would come again and take them to his father's house. Amen. Take them to his kingdom. And so in Matthew 16 and verse 18, he promises to build his church and the gates of hell not shall not prevail Amen. against it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church has withstood continuous persecutions. The church has withstood continuous hate. Amen. But I'm here to say to us right now that Christ's return is imminent. 
Christ returned. It is true. He shall be coming back. Many things are happening out there. And we can see through the eyes of time. Hallelujah. That's coming is very close. Let's look again. Matthew 24 and verse 36. Acts 1 verse 7. But of a day and hour. Know it no more man. Not the angels in heaven. Amen. So this is about God. Is coming back as no doubt, amen, those who feel they should know. Amen. The Bible said, not even the angels, hallelujah, amen. but the God of heaven, he knows. Acts 1, 7, it is not for you to know the time and the season amen. when the Father hath put in his own power. But, but God does give us signs concerning the time structured of his second coming. Oh, praise be to God. Amen. Oh, praise God. He will not just take us unaware. Yes. He wants to ensure that we understand prophecy. Yes. He wants us to, and to know that we read enough so we can save ourselves and this generation can be saved. Matthew 24, uh, 32 to 36, speaks about the power of the fig tree, which speaks to the ending of time. And Matthew 24 and verse 33. Where do you see these things? Amen. We should look up yeah, for our redemption. Joy and I will praise be to God. We see Matthew 24 as a book that we can relate to our time. As a book that is filled with prophetic utterances. Hallelujah. And we believe that as we read it, we should believe it. As we read it, we should allow the word of God to constrain us, oh praise God, in presenting ourselves, our bodies, as living sacrifice, only unto God, which is our reasonable service. Amen. In Matthew 24, the disciples they put the question to him. They said, Master, we are here with you. Tell us when will these things be? Yes. And what will be the signs of our coming and the end of the age? Yes. Jesus tells them two significant events. Hear what Jesus said. Take heed yes. that no man deceive you. Yes. For men will come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. He said, You hear of wars and rumors of wars. Isn't that what is happening in the world today? Yes. Isn't that what we are faced with? Yes. Amen. Amen. In the global world today. We may not see the wars in a full measure in Jamaica, but we hear of it in the global space. We hear of it over there and everywhere. And so therefore, the prophecy work is not just for Jamaica land we love, but the prophecy, amen, is for the nations of the earth. Oh, praise be to God. No doubt. We have seen a dramatic rise in cults and in the cults. We have seen tremendous world wars yeah. that has plagued ah, the century. Yeah. 
for a nation shall rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdoms. The Bible speaks of famine, pestilence, diseases, earthquake in diverse places. Come and praise God. He said all of these are the beginning of sorrows. Hallelujah. We are witnessing today. Hallelujah. The accelerated occurrences. Amen. Of earthquakes. Severe famine. And the rise of serious diseases. On our land. We have seen it in our age. We have seen it in our time. We know about it. We can tell somebody we are not going to see it, but we have seen it. It is on our land right now. It is in the world right now. Nations are reeling from the effects of this serious ah, disease that penetrates the land. Hallelujah. But I'm glad to know that the prophecy is true. I'm glad to know that this is a prophetic word. Can you praise the Lord today? Eh? Come on. The church believes it. The church knows it. For the church depends on God. The church relies on the word of God. For well, praise be to God. That if it's in this life only we have hope. Then we remember most miserable. Yes. Come on. Yes. Rise in famine. Rise in serious disease. Yes. The COVID-19. Amen. 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 Approximately, amen, 98% of our world population. Amen. Of our world is constructing is having a touch of COVID-19. It was set about 200 and our countries in the world. Amen. Is not plagued with that kind of a disease. If this is not a prophecy, if this is not a word that was written by them, hallelujah, then I know that God's word is true. Amen. Come and praise God. Praise the Lord. Acceler accelerated occurrences, serious diseases. Our world is worried today. Yeah. Our world economic amen situation is put on pause. Put on hold today. For humans are dying. Humans are just dying every day. As you listen to the news, thousands are dying every day. In one country, in one day, a thousand died. The other day, 900 died. Come on. And these persons would not know that these things would come upon them. Hallelujah. Ah, the Father sucks. The sovereign, the children's teeth, search. We have set a precedent in our world, a precedent where we forget God. We forget Amen and His work, forget His charges, forget His word. I'm not read His word, I'm not properly understood His word. Hallelujah. And so the seasons and times are on us today. Yeah. The world is worried. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The watchers, the watchers, the incurable disease, people die in hundreds every day. Yeah. But our God is well able. Amen. I believe God. Come on. 
I still believe God. I still believe God. That after a storm, there's going to come. I believe God is sending another word to somebody today. Some amen, ah, Nebuchadnezzar. Some Belch Belshazzar's art and mine. Some people in high places. Yes. Some those who lift up their heels or their heads above the God of gods, the kings of kings, and the lords of lords. God is calling the world to reckon him. Yes. Calling the world to respond to him. Yes. Calling the nation to prayer. Yes. The nation to fasting. Yes. We are on the obligation and we are obliged to seek an answer from God. Yes. Oh, praise be to God. Praise Hallelujah. The church knows the answer. Yes. We know the answer to our problems lies in God. Amen. For God is available and God is always worthy. Yes. Well, praise God. Yes. Come on. Yes. The world ceased to function in its usual way. Mankind is more concerned about what is happening than the sins committed before God. Hallelujah. And so this condition is grinding the world to help, help him air trouble, help him uh, traveling on the sea, help him traveling in our, our home communities. There, is, there are problems on the horizon. Yes. Come on. Yes. Problems in the way. I want to look at the 
chapters, Ezekiel 38, 39 in your spare time, it tells of an invasion of Israel. Read it for yourself. By the northern kingdom, God of Mega, and in my readings, presumably, presumably, this could be Russia. God will totally destroy. That's what God said. He will totally destroy the advancing nations. Hallelujah. And this prophecy is true. Hallelujah. God will send a light out there in the darkness and God will rescue his people in the end time. Amen. Oh, praise be to God. Revelation 16, 12 to 16 tells us an, of an evolving, an evolving army of the East. And the only evolving army in the East right now is China. It has a man that has world conquest. Yes, it has his eyes on the world. World conquest in mind with it. It has its present population. It's over 1.2 billion people. A vast, heavily equipped army ready for action. This prophecy is true. Oh, praise be to God. Yeah. And this will happen, amen, in the near future. Hallelujah. This is a prophetic utterance. I believe that God Almighty wants to spare his people. He wants to save us. He is giving us enough time to make ourselves ready and prepare for his second coming. Hear what he said in verse 22 of Matthew 24. And except those days should have shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the next sake, those days shall have shortened. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders in so much, if it were possible, there was a man they would have deceived the very elect. Amen. Right now, church, I am closing this sermon, these prophecies, and other prophecies. They are powerful events that points to the coming of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We are seeing this around us today. We must admit that we have walked far from him. Yes. We must admit that it's time to come home. We must admit, hallelujah, that we need a savior, hallelujah, that will keep us beyond these problems. We need a Christ for our crisis today. And so the question is, if Christ were to come today, and he were to ask you, why shall I let you into my kingdom? What would you say? What would you say? All of this rest with your work. All of this rest with you. In Revelation, those were filthy. Where we feel the still. Those who are righteous, we are the righteous still. And those who are holy, we are the holy still. Hallelujah. Therefore, 
Are we seeing evidences of his coming in our time? Look out for the signs. There are clear evidences. Let us be mindful that he will come at a time yes. when we think not. Amen. God bless your hearts today. Let me pray with someone who out there who are lost and dying. Amen. Someone who are out there who really need a touch of the Savior's hand. Someone out there who have listened to the word and in your own mind you feel but something is happening in our world. Something is happening. You feel that in your spirit right now. Say to the Lord, I want to ensure that when you're coming back, I will be with you in glory. Amen. If you raise your hands, amen to God right now. Then God is able to to help you to be in that great number. Amen. Father, we thank you right now. For you are our blessed hope. You are our eternal salvation. You are our rock and our fortress. You are our El Shaddai. We look to you, mighty God, above every other times. For we are seeing some evidences very close, amen, before us, suggesting to us that your coming is near. In the name of Jesus Christ, build your church. Protect your church. Protect your people. Allow those who are the mighty God, who are still wasting time, not observing the time. For the day shall so evil. But they'll just come to some consciousness and some understanding that what is happening there is beyond is, is, is beyond above human understanding, above medical science, above mighty God, amen, the very thought of man. For your thoughts are not like our thoughts. Neither are your ways like our ways. I pray, my dear God, for the woman and the man right now who are going through affliction, going through the burdens and the sway of this life. I commit them to you right now. I commit those who are sick in body and those who are affected, my dear God, amen, in the quarantine. Ah, uh, by COVID-19, I pray right now that you will ease their mind. You will open their respiratory amen system and allow in the breath to flow that they can do well even now. I pray for those who are hungry, those who are naked and thirsty, and those who are going through organizing times. I pray right now for them. As a church, mighty God, our voices are going out and we pray that, amen, our faith will be lifted up in you. Touch every heart today, every mind today. Let, let every soul be subjected to your, to your power and the will be subsumed in your will. Guide our thoughts on our lives today. Remember those able to listen by way of the internet across the world. May your divine love and your favor rest in their hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Say thanks, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Our divine service is now complete. May the Lord bless you. Have a good afternoon. Stay close to God. 
Let God provide for your blessing even now that you are with your really in need of. Pursue after God even to the end of this day and see oh God will come through for you in a great and a powerful way. God bless you.